Welcome to the Steelers Realm Podcast. And now, here are the boys of Steelers Realm, New Jersey Dev, JT, and the famous TA. What's going on, Steeler Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Steelers Round Podcast. Man, I, I like that jam. I like the other jam, too. But anyhow, uh, happy Thursday. We're back at you yet again. I'm um, one of your hosts, JT, uh, joined by the normal cast of characters again, except Dev. Um, I'm still waiting for him to join us, too. But it is the famous TA. Looks like back in his home crib again. What's going on, brother? How was your week so far? This week. Man, my week's been great, JT, and I'm just sitting here watching you jamming. I was waiting for you to break out the drum set, but I got to admit, JT, right now I'm still a little perplexed. You know, while we was off show, Steelers Nation, I learned a new terminology that I'm just not quite sure I understand from the younger generation, so I'm hoping that CJ can explain to me what it means to rip a piss or rip a pee-pee. <laughs> what does that mean, JT? I don't know. Well, it here he is joined with us again this week. Uh, well, TA, well, TA, uh, the bladder, the bladder was about to explode. And, you know, all I did was rip the piss. Well, yeah, but the last thing you want to do rip is rip the on bladder or rip a piss. I mean, I can rip a piece of paper. You know, I can rip a lot of things, but I'm not quite sure how you rip water. I don't have a good answer for you. I just uh, kind of mm-hmm. threw that out there. But I do want to let you guys know. I filled up my gas tank for twenty-two dollars today. What was it? Uh, think about, uh, wait a minute. Think wait about a minute. That. Are you on a moped? Now, now, now. It was my lawnmower. Track. It was my I, lawnmower. But I, hey, I, I, what I a steal! A <laughs> what a steal that was. All right, hey TA, scoot yes, over, sir. man. You're hiding behind our logo there. Oh, there you wow. go. That's there he is. Come on, oh, you can't you hide back there. No, no, no. We're oh, video. I gotta hide. I gotta hide, man. Nah. Nobody wants to see this ugly mug. Yeah, I do. You do. So, All right, yeah. so move over. All right, move on. Anyhow, over, over. What's going on, boys? Interesting week again. Always is Steelers Nation, Steelers Country, especially it, Steelers Local Seven Two Four. I know. It, it, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say it has been. I mean, the Roonies had a huge unveiling uh, there, JT. Did you see what we got in Pittsburgh now? So I did see that we have a new Steelers Museum. Is that right? I, I uh, mean, I just got a whiff of this. So I don't know. If you know something, please do share. Yeah, I mean, we got another museum in the great city of Pittsburgh. I mean, how many museums does that make? <laughs> Too many. Uh, I know it's a lot. <clears throat> and, and to the people out there that don't know this, there's actually a fully dedicated Roberto Clemente museum. No one talks about it, but I tell people you have to go. Um, there's memorabilia there. You have to go. It's like the history of Roberto Clemente. Look it up. No one talks enough about it. That's my favorite museum in Pittsburgh. Is that because you're a wannabe bat boy? Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to someday put those baseball pants on. <laughs> and trust me, I would pull them up. I would have the high socks. Well, I would, oh, I would, you I'd have to. It. You have to. Well, that's all part of the get up. That's it, man. Old school. What do they call them? Stirrup pants or stirrup socks? Oh, I would definitely be wearing stirrups. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. But I tell you, the good news is, is I'm kind of excited to see this museum. I mean, especially if it's just going to be about the history of Pittsburgh. I mean, can you imagine how much stuff they have in archives? I mean, we've already seen, what's that big auction, the the Lindells or the Leidens or oh, the big auction where they're always auctioning off, you know, old Steeler uniforms like Ham and oh, Shell and is that what you're no, talking about? it's not the Lloyds of London. It's the big sports auction house. No. Oh, Anyways, man. so you no. figure they got all this stuff. I mean, why not go ahead and share it with us fans? No, 
did the Roonies actually pay for it, or did they just build the city of Pittsburgh for it? <laughs> Don't well, know that. I'm going to have to say that uh, it was a joint effort. <laughs> a nice joint task force. <laughs> anyway, how about AB? How about AB? Wait, wait that's, a minute. That's, a, AB's back in the news again? Yes, and it's actually not bad is, news. Is is he is he finally going to be a rap singer? Because I hear he's coming to Pittsburgh. Not no, AB. He he. If for all you Steeler fans out there that don't know, AB would like to retire a Steeler now. I sent in our group message. Why not bring him back? Why not do it? I believe, and I I truly believe this, that he is the best Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver of all time. The things that he did on that football field, take away what he did off the field. On the football field, he was the best wide receiver that Steelers have ever had. Now, I know you guys are going to counter me with Heinz Ward and, well, I, I would understand the Heinz Ward, but people before my time, no. It was a completely different game, and A.B. was a monster. He is the best I've ever seen. And I said in that group message, the only person that I would rank ahead of him in since 2000 was Larry Fitzgerald. All right. Well, you know, I, I, I seen that too, CJ, and, and, and here's what I have to say. I believe that that AB did bring a presence to the field from a wide receiver standpoint that we haven't seen. And let's face it, he was only 800 yards shy of breaking Heinz Ward's record before he went off the deep end. But at the end of the day, you're never going to go ahead and give him the kudos for us old Steeler fans. You're going to have to wait another 20 years because – if it wasn't for John Stallworth or Lynn Swan, and hell, you can even throw Lewis Slips in there for that matter, A.B. wouldn't have the opportunity that he had today's NFL. Because you got to remember, in 1979, when that offensive group hit the field with Bradshaw, Swan, and Stallworth, they were making music of what you kids talk about today that the Rams did with Isaac Bruce and Terry Holt and... What's the his greatest name? show on turf, baby. The greatest show on turf. So th you're right. Today's NFL is a lot different than back then, but it started back then. And you got to always pay homage to your roots. Now, my question is, uh, would you guys think differently if while AB was a Steeler and they won a Super Bowl, would you guys think differently and uh, say, hey, Here's a guy that's won a Super Bowl. He's an all-time Steeler great. Let's bring him back. Because they really didn't win anything with him. He put up big stats. He did this and that. Would that change your mind? No, you said it right there. He put up big stats and brought us nothing but grief, pain, and misery. And a cancer in the locker room that we're just now getting over. So, greatest receiver? In his own mind. He's a legend in his own mind. JT, what do you think? Uh, interesting. Uh, I think it would have changed my mind had we won a Super Bowl with him. Uh, just like Santonio Holmes, right? Uh, now, Santonio didn't have, uh, you know, nearly the stats and the duration, I don't think, uh, looking back, but. Yeah, would would change my mind. And just you know, uh, the last several years of him just being an asshole. Tell us how you really feel, JT. Uh, yeah, that's not the first time we've ever heard anybody say something like that about him. So, but yeah, I don't know. When I saw that that out there, I I posted my displeasure with it. Per so. Personally, I think. They should do it. AB has tried to... How do I want to say this with Big Ben? He's tried to mend that relationship. 
oh, stop, stop, stop. Is he trying to mend the relationship or is he realized he's so far off the deep end? He'll be lucky to be the next Drew Pearson and get voted into the Hall of Fame as an old timer because with his I think, shenanigans, I think he both. ain't going in. Oh, no, he's not. Right. He's not. So, but so you're going to tell me what, what his little. I'm amended. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Is going to work. What better way, though, uh, from if you're looking at strictly from a B's point of view, um, to say that I've changed, I've matured, I messed up, so on and so forth, than actually releasing the statement. I understand what he's doing. I think he's trying to frame this as he would like to retire Steeler. And with that comes a lot of, all right, well, maybe AB is a little different. And maybe, you know what, one year, $7 million to play on an irrelevant team looks a little better. All right. So, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen, we have now exceeded our AB discussion time limit. <laughs> okay. So, I, I, I just want to, no, 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 no. I just want to no, add one no, thing. No, one thing. Try One thing, on. if he had grown up and was a man mute you. with his with his current new status of being a rap singer coming to Pittsburgh May 20th, he wouldn't have canceled it to be in Abu Dhabi partying and put us fans who's long awaited his debut. With that, JT, next topic, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, that could be that could be a whole. And, and I'm rabbit sure that hole? will continue to be a, 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 a rabbit hole to dive down into. So, yeah, man, what else is going on? Um, some GM type things going on there. Uh, I heard uh, Riddick, uh, they signed him to what, a year, one year extension? ESPN, is that? Take him off the table. Yeah. I tell you what, Lou, Lewis Riddick has a high. <laughs> has a high performing agent he takes a, an interview in pittsburgh he takes a second interview in pittsburgh everyone and their sister thinks the booth for espn sucks and this guy gets a contract extension from espn hats off to his agent <laughs> yeah if, if anyone knows his agent's number can i have it <laughs> i need it but anyway hey. no I like I like Lewis. He's a pit man. I'm a pit fan. I think he is decent in the booth. He's more he's better as an analyst. I'm happy to hear that he is not the next GM of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think everyone here should have a smile on their face. <laughs> yeah, and TA, you were talking um about another GM was out. Was he interview, interviewing elsewhere? Well, or yeah. Or another team candidate, I, I should say. Candidate. I mean, it looks like we, we might be dragging our feet a little bit here too long because it looks like Brandon Hunt may be on his way to Buffalo for an assistant GM. Now, we've talked about this between Omar getting the head gig, Brandon, you know, being, you know, the second guy in there. But it looks like Brandon's not waiting any longer. Brandon, this is the second team he's, you know, he, he already interviewed with Philly. Now he's interviewing with Buffalo. I don't know if he's trying to push the Steelers' hand to say, hey, look, let's make this decision. Let's say, face it, JT. They got to the end of the month. Colbert's contract ends May 31st. As I wow. said, I think this is I – don't, I don't expect him to leave for Buffalo. <laughs> I think this is one of those things where he is playing. He is he is going to force Steelers' hand in negotiations, so on and so forth. I would be very surprised if he goes there under Brand Bean to be an assistant GM. Um, it's more of a lateral move than it is actually a promotion. Yeah, he might get a raise in salary, but so what? But well, to play devil's advocate off that, he's going to franchise with Josh Allen. 
So this at this point, the Steelers need to make a decision. Do we want Brandon Hunt or not? Because well, he's paid his dues. Who, who's to say Brandon Hunt, they've already made their decision and they don't want him? And who's to say that right now that's the reason they're going through this because they want the right candidate and maybe they feel Brandon Hunt's not the right candidate. We don't and know I that. We're not inside I, the office. No, but I think we would find out by Wednesday if he's if he is an assistant GM for the Bills. I think Omar Khan and him working together in a collaborative effort is what makes the most sense. Well, I think to us fans from the outside, you know, in the way that we like to promote from in, he understands that he's been tutelaged underneath Colbert for all these years. It would, for us, stability would be the way to go. But is stability always the right thing? Or when we brought in Colbert, do we shake it up a little bit and bring in a breath of fresh air? I think if they were going to bring in the breath of fresh air, though, they would have already done it. Not in the Steelers' way. They're, this is an important decision. I mean, look, we've seen what they did to, just to draft a quarterback. They went to every quarterback combine from here to California and back again twice and still ended up with the guy in the, in the locker room next door. There's no saying that they're not doing the same thing now, only to end up with Omar and allow Brandon to go. So I think right now they're doing their due diligence. And my hat's off to the Rooney family. Do your due diligence. JT? Good. Do them. Do what? You do dil- <laughs> diligence. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to make sure it was just good. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know if it was good, good, or, you know, good, great. Yeah. Just good. Okay. Yeah, good. So I guess the clock's ticking, man. Um, I was thinking about, you know, I saw a lot of pictures and a lot of things going on last couple days. So I have been, uh, to be honest with you, I've been just kind of just catching up a little bit, seeing a few little tidbits of info here and there. But what um, uh, of, of the, uh, what is the rookie mini camp? OTAs? Yeah, so this took place. Over now? Yeah, they ended on the 15th or 16th. I forget uh, the exact date, but they ended uh, sometime last week. There was some yeah. interesting stuff. I Actually, mean, it was Monday, the 16th. Monday. Yeah, it's been a long mm-hmm. week. So do, does it really matter? Kenny Pickett shed some leadership, just kind of reading some articles, so on and so forth. I mean, Nothing says leadership like leading a bunch of rookies in shorts in May. <laughs> yeah. I just love, I love reading stuff. Uh, rookie minicamp. I mean, come on. I am excited. George Pickens listening to him talk football. Um, I listened to, I forget. It, it was an interview on the fan. Uh, listening to him talk about the different wide receiver positions, so on and so forth. I think he's going to have a simplified role in this offense, but I think his potential um, is kind of like a Chase Claypool type deal his rookie season. Now, I think he's a little more, how do I want to say, polished than than Chase was coming out of uh, Notre Dame. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. He's kind of my dark horse rookie of the year. Guy. All right. Hmm. Think that's I, that's pretty much like every time I kind of checked into social media here or there, or heard a little buzz or ding or notification. I guess uh, all I was seeing was like Kenny Pickett pictures like this. So I guess it was the Kenny Pickett mini camp. <laughs> Well, it was better than the Damon Wayans look that he had a draft day. <laughs> Dude, that's that's getting memed all over the place. That's so funny. It is. So it funny. is. Yeah, and especially the way the TV was in that shot. Everybody's like superimposing different stuff on the TV now. Uh, that's great stuff. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, you know, not to, you know, take away from what you said, CJ, but I'll tell you what. 
mini rookie camp. Let's face it, this is the first one that they've been able to have in two years since COVID. Yeah, that's and, true. And I mean, you've got 50 players that get to come in to Pittsburgh for them to look at. And I mean, we even had we had Kevin Green's son show up. We had D. Staley son show up. I mean, there's a lot of people. And then let's also keep in mind here. We made room on the roster because we actually did end up signing four guys. We ended up signing Trevor Mason, cornerback. We signed kicker, Nick Skiba. Nick Skiba, Skiba you know how I am. Skiba. With Skiba. 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 We also got Carlin Patel. And we picked up a wide receiver, Tyler Sneed. Now, you know, Sneed is another one of those uh, – Austin uh guys man he's only five foot seven I don't know what we're looking for if we're looking for the next uh uh what was it uh Derek Hill uh is it Hill not Hill who was the who it's was the who, yeah but who was the punt returner that was for KC man who had a great eight year career before he was finally taken out of the league oh uh oh I'm trying to think of his name now mm-hmm. Yeah, come on, CJ. You got a young mind. Help us, old guys. No, out. it's it's not coming to me. My first thought was um, the guy from Atlanta. The guy from Atlanta. Who's the guy and from Atlanta? Devin has uh, Chicago. Devin Hester. That that was my yeah. first Devin thought. Devin Hester, oh, right. Chicago. Yeah. There you go. He was a return special. He he was exciting to watch, man. I he he's gonna he might make the Hall of Fame. He he, he might. might. And you know what? I think he should. I really do. There was nobody that returned kicks and punts even close to his ability. He completely changed the game for those Chicago Bears teams. Well, he definitely kept them in contention. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Well, I I know you said uh, we signed those four guys, but but can we can we say goodbye to a Steelers reg Steelers legend Enrico Bussy? What a name! What a legend! <laughs> what a time in Pittsburgh! Now he'll probably get signed back to the, um, uh, yeah, spring training. He'll probably get signed back to the practice squad. Seems like he does nothing and continues to get invites back. And Sam Sloman, poor guy. What's he supposed to do? Fills in a few games. He makes all of his kicks. Now he's not collecting a paycheck. Come on. That's not nice. Look, I think we're okay without Sloman. I, I, you know, I really think we're okay without Sloman. I think they will live too. Yeah, yeah, it, it it it'll be just fine. I think what we've done this year in the off season has probably been the most exciting between the free agencies, the draft, and let's face it, we're still not done. We ended up picking up another offensive lineman. And there's rumors we might end up picking up left tackle Eric Fisher yet to go. That's the one. I was trying to find that. Was he from the Colts? He's the one from the Colts, and we ended up signing uh, Trent Scott uh, from uh, Carolina. So, I mean, right now, I mean, We've definitely bolstered our offensive line in some form, shape, or another. Now the question is, is what does that mean for Kevin Dotson, Kendrick Green, and our boy out there on left tackle, Dan the Man Moore? Hmm. Well, that just means I got to work harder, man. Uh, I, I, think, I think Daniel Moore... All right, I've said this before. I think to be a rookie left tackle and how he performed, he wasn't great. He was decent. I think there's a lot of growth to be had there. But there was an interesting conversation that I was listening to. It was on um, the NFL Ringer podcast. It was 
Would you rather have a full complement O line that's average, or would you rather have three above average guys with two below average guys that are holes in their O line? And it kind of got me thinking looking at the Steelers O line, you know, they're definitely better. You can you can say for a fact that these guys are at least above average, and I think they've made the right moves uh, this offseason that they n- might not be great, a top flight O line, but there's no holes. You can look at each one of the people that will start and you'll say, All right, I I have trust in this guy. Right? So that's kind of what excites me the most about what they've done this offseason. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think they're going to surprise some people uh, in their ability to run the football. You know, I have to, I have to agree with you. I don't think just in our ability to run the ball. I think, um, I think we're going to fly under the radar for, for a little bit until we make some splash. (laughs) Use the Tom Linism there. Um, and all of a sudden people are like going to be like, Hey, what's up with the Steelers? But there, there, there are some downsides to how we're situated too, which is, you know, almost, let's say whole new offense. Let's be honest. Whole new offense. Right. Um, yeah, we bolstered the lines on both sides. My opinion. Um, I like some of the, the, um, the signings and the picks. I'm excited. Here's what I'm most excited about, guys. I guess. Um, don't uh, don't count Mitch out. Is my thoughts here on this going into training camp? Uh, once we get there, my thoughts is don't count Mitch out just yet. I think whenever the time is right, um, Kenny could be the future, and it could be a wonderful story. This could be the beginning of history again, or. You know, there's there's other possibilities there, too. But I'm excited to see what what they can do with this offense and with these these two receivers they have now, in addition to our veteran core, I, I guess. Fourth year, Ma- bro. Mapletron uh, for for one and Claypool and and uh, Deontay and uh, not to not to. Uh, give less credence to our future hall of fame tight end. If he continues that way in the mooth. So yeah, I'm excited to see what they can do, but these receivers, who's the one they say, it's like, he's really fast. That's Calvin Austin. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited that. And, And Pickens, he, uh, just so <laughs> have you guys seen some of the highlights of him like getting into scruffs during uh you know pass attempts yeah he's a scrappy little dude yeah he's scrappy man and i like Pickens, that. You know who else Pickens, he reminds me of it was scrappy like that you know who actually he does anquan bolden okay. anquan bolden i i could go with that i was thinking heinz I know I wanted to be a little different there, <laughs> but if you look at his stats as a freshman, uh, pre-injury, the dude was a freak. He he was unbelievable, and everyone said two years he'll be the first wide receiver off the board. He's got size, he's got skill. It's going to come down to can he stay healthy in an entire year? I think you will. Excuse me. I hope so. Oh yeah, so so does all the Steeler Nation. Absolutely, because he he legitimately is a physical freak, and I think he has a chance to kind of unlock uh, some of this offense. It'll be interesting to see in the preseason, s- summer camp, all that, hearing the reports and stuff. Getting to see him in Latrobe is going to be awesome. That's it's what I'm one thinking. of the things I'm looking forward to. Me too. Here. What? We're okay. what? About 10 weeks away, roughly? Yeah. Eight weeks away? Uh, tick, tick, tock, tick, tock. 
Well, we'll have to offline. We'll have to uh, discuss a way for us to get down there together. I know I'm going to drag the boy Wonder down there. He'll trip up. He'll really enjoy that. See well, if I can get some trespasses down there. The <clears> biggest <throat> thing that's going to be interesting to see, I mean, if you figure right now, if we start it tomorrow, you got Deontay Johnson, Claypool, Pickens, Austin, throw in Fryermuth. We still don't know how they're going to go ahead and use Connor Hayward. You still got Watt, and you still got Najee coming out of the backfield. If anything, Canada has every single weapon at his disposal. So me personally, with all the updates, this is more or less saying, okay, Canada, can you or can you not run an NFL offense? Because if anybody has pressure on them right now, it is Mr. Canada. Agreed. I, I was listening to uh shout on sports yesterday on my way into work. And there's a lot of, there's, not a lot of people. There's a few people thinking that Najee might actually have a chance if he stays healthy. He's going to be the workhorse of this offense, catching passes out of the backfield, running. He's an actual dark horse potentially for the MVP. If you he's he could put up stupid numbers if he stays healthy. Yeah, but for him I to stay th- healthy. Tomlin cannot run the wheels off of him. Tomlin's got to be able to give him a break this year. Period. When, That's all when there is. is That's Tom, on the subject. When, when is Tomlin not running wheels off his workhorse running back? And and right. what you but, just said then makes absolutely kind of one no of those, sense. Yeah. That's why. I, that's why I've I've wanted to see someone like a Anthony McFarlane step up, be kind of a change of pace back. That's what they've been missing is someone to uh, even when yes. Love Bell Love Bell took a uh, beat, right? Then Connor, when he holds out, he takes a beating. Najee right. last year, he takes. We a were beating. saying that we were saying that with James Connor. Mm-hmm. I just saw a video clip just uh, yesterday or last night of uh, draft day for him. It was pretty cool, but um, yeah. Um. When, when have we had that kind of one-two punch, though? Never really had that speed guy to complement the power guy. Well, well, we don't. And we yeah, don't. Yeah, because th- this, well, actually, I swear to God, if Benny Snell, if, ben, if Benny Smell, Snell makes this <laughs> roster, I'm going to be pissed. He well, just called that what you just did was that an oxymoron. It was not intentional. He <laughs> he stinks. Yes, he does smell. But well, let, let's let's look at the alternatives. Anthony McFarland has not stepped up to the plate. This will no. be his third year. He's got to. And Trey Edmonds, you know, right now he's just been riding coattails. So you have to look at Benny Snell of either stepping up or Connor Hayward coming in there playing running back as he did in college. But my personal belief, we're going to see a lot of high school football this year because we are going to be running a boatload of jet sweeps, whether it be with whether it be with Austin, whether it be with um, Pickens, or even, for that matter, Deontay. And you might as well go ahead and throw in the one who ran them last year, Chase Claypool. We're going to turn our wide receivers into running backs at some point in time this season to spell Najee. I got a question. Let's keep this very simple. Makes sense. Watching Debo Samuel's success in San Francisco, being a wide receiver in the backfield, do you think Deontay Johnson could be the guy that spells Najee in the backfield? This is completely open-ended, just throwing it out there. He's dynamic with football. Well, Mr. Canada, if you're listening, I think you have four wide receivers. You need to start trying out for running back this year. We need to find (laughs) the next Debo Samuels. We're slashes, right? Yep, because we got four slashes. Or, as Tomlin likes to say, we've got – a pocket full of Swiss Army knives on this team right now, guys. <laughs> there it is. Also, uh, yeah. we talked about it pre-show. 
How about Mr. Watt being the highest paid offense player on this team? I just did see that. That's actually yeah. crazy. Isn't it? A, a fullback. So let me ask you this question. Because from Derek Watt's standpoint, he's not getting any younger, for one. Two, he's definitely been underutilized in this in this offense to any stretch of the imagination. We have yet to see anything that he did in San Diego with us here in Pittsburgh. So the question is, is to remain on the team and to sign Minka Fitzpatrick, does he take a considerable pay cut to continue to play or do we cut him outright and let him just go to the free agent market? I think with the relationship with his brother, it's going to be portrayed to him. Hey, can you take less money? Right. If you want to stick around here, it'll be kind of one of those song and dances. This is what we can afford to give you. We need a clear cap space, so on and so forth. And if he says no to that, I think he will then be cut. My opinion on fullbacks is they have their purposes. What has his purpose in the NFL still? Okay, CJ, let me let let me ask you this, CJ. Without you dragging on here anymore, where is the foot? Where is the fullback utilized in today's NFL? You talk about just earlier when we were talking about wide receivers. You know, in today's football. So, in today's football, where do you see the utilization of a fullback? Across Inside. thirty across thirty two teams. Well, it's not much other than goal line and uh short short yardage situations. Or heavy package. Here's my thing. If he was making the league minimum, none of us would care. No. Would <clears throat> TA would you care? I mean, he he's a special teams player. He has value there, kind of. Honestly, I don't care what he's making. I just want to see us utilize him. Why why do you have a Swiss Army knife if you're not going to utilize him? Is if you're not going to you're... open it. Right, if you're not <laughs> going to open it. Why why not utilize the guy? I mean, when we passed the ball to him last year, he was able to pass. When we asked him to block, he was able to block. When we gave him the ball, he was able to run. So, why are we not utilizing his skills and or strengths? Yeah, coach. Hmm. Come on. Why? I tell you what, I'll get a hold of Matt Canna's agent. We'll bring him on here in a few weeks. <laughs> we can ask him. We can ask him. No, but my thing with the fullback is short yardage and goal to go situations. Any other point in time, whether when he's in the game, I would rather have a tight end who's more athletic in the game. Period. I don't know. I just think he's overpaid. I think he should be cut. If he was on the league minimum, fine with me. So I'll keep it simple. I think every everybody thinks that, too. So, hey, guys, let me take a second here and give a shout-out. Uh, we got to talk about uh, support for Steelers Realm Podcast, of course, is being brought to you by Manscaped. Best in men, men's below the waist grooming, and um, I don't know. Do uh, <clears throat> you got anything going on uh, regarding the manscape this week? Uh, you know, now you know we did uh, get some products in return and a small fee in return for endorsing them. But um, you know, we'll, we'll get to as you can see in the ticker there. We've got a special deal for for Steelers Realm listeners. Uh, 20% off discount, but, um, any manscaped, uh, experience. I got the, uh, I got the weed whacker out sitting there this week, like mustache is getting all tangled in my nose here. So I got the weed whacker out, trimmed it all up. Really good, man. So, but <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, JT, it, de- it, it definitely makes it easier. For, for grooming needs. There is no ifs, ands, or about it, buts about it. Manscaped has definitely come up with a great product. And I tell you what, the little lotions that they got to throw on there to, you know, smoothen up the jewels, man, that is all right. Especially yeah, now it's yeah. getting hot and muggy. Pers- 
uh, precision engine engineered tools for those family jewels. Man, hey, like I like I said last week, went out, shaved up, went golfing, no chafing. It was beautiful. Um, can't really complain. I then kind of experimented with it, uh, with the chest hair, gave it a little trim and needed trimmed right. up. Usually, uh, prior to using Manscaped, I'd get some of those lines, some of that like razor burn, anything like that that kind of showed. None of that. None. Yeah. There, there you go. So I'm kind of beach ready here. I'm beach ready. Yeah. I'm ready for Ocean City here in three weeks. <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm ready to roll, baby. There you go. I think uh, T.A. had to run out and grab his. That's exactly what I did. All that <laughs> talk got me excited, and I thought, you know what? The missus is I'm not working today. Up. So I had to go turn ahead and, and, and cut off for, for a minute. So I apologize, Steeler Nation. I need a little trim. Okay. That's how quick it works. Right That's there. exactly <laughs> how quick it works. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, guys, uh, manscaped.com and ladies, too. Enter Realm 20 for a 20% discount and, of course, free shipping worldwide. Miss it worldwide. So, anyhow, thanks, Manscaped. Appreciate it, guys. Keep it up. You know, it's hot weather, man. Things get things get messy. So, yeah. And it is about to be a hot one here in Western PA. It is. You know, <laughs> change the subject for a second, but... Yeah, we got some baseball to play, man. Now, fortunately, we got um, – this is our last weekend for tournament play, for travel ball. But, um, yeah, we got 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Ga- games tomorrow – or Saturday morning. And then uh, to be decided for Sunday. But I'm glad we're going to get some early games in before the noon sun hits, though, man. So it looks like it's going to be a – Well, bigger. I'm not going to lie. You guys knew how hot it was. Last weekend, Western PA. I fell asleep on a hammock. I have some of the worst tan lines of all time. (laughs) So much so that only Manscaped could actually fix this. (laughs) Okay. It ain't. I remember I I was working. uh, Hudal came home one one after one morning and it was beautiful out. I went got something to eat. Went back outside through the through the uh, the lawn chair out there, laid back like this. And about four hours later, woke up with my underarms burning. <laughs> that was brutal. All the wrong places got sun that morning. So uh, I never did that again. I always waited. Anyhow. Way off the rails. Sorry about that. Well, well, before we well, before we cut off, we, we got to bring up two things else in Pittsburgh sports. First of all, what's your guys' opinion of the Pirates pulling out a win on a no hitter? And oh, they didn't pitch the no hitter. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I tell you what, nothing says resilience, <laughs> perseverance, character, <laughs> like getting no hit and winning. God, hey, Cincinnati Bengals fans, you just you trade you sold your soul for that one season. You're about to experience pain for Col- the Columbus Blue Jackets next season's Bengals, and you're already seeing it for the Reds. Apologies, not they're cursed. <laughs> All right, I, so last but not least, no, is here any- we go. Is anybody as disappointed as I am that these Penguins up 3-0? I get it. You lost your captain. But you couldn't even muster up enough for the Gipper to go out and win one more? You had to lay down to the Rangers? Are you kidding me? That is pathetic. Just pathetic. And there's reports coming out that that Crosby could have played in game six. And the GM, Hextall, uh, vetoed it. He wanted him to rest. He wanted to make sure he was 100%. You know what? Well, Sullivan came out. Sullivan came out 
and said that wasn't true, that, that the Penguins doctors uh, did not clear him to play. And so that's the final word on it. So who yeah, knows? Regardless. Hey, I haven't, I haven't seen a choke job that bad in years. Well, years. This, this is dating myself, but back in the day, we'd call that a Maryland Chambers. I was just trying to think of someone that I could actually say on on this podcast that it reminded me of. That was bad. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. So oof. I wonder if Monica Lewinsky choked that bad. It was <laughs> right. it was the it was the cigar All right. smoke only. <laughs> We're going sideways here. Um what else, man? Anything else? What do you think? Man, I think it's it short is, and sweet tonight, boys. Yeah, it's just a GM ticker now, buddy. I yeah. mean, it's just yeah. who's our next GM and the rookies I'm, right I'm now. We, we do have we do have a couple of rookies that are on their way to California for the NFL PA rookie premiere, which is basically the yearly event that the NFL puts on to say, how do you save your money and not get hoodwink, scandaled, bamboozled, by everybody who's going to be coming after your money. So hopefully the boys that we sent out there, which is Kenny, Austin, and Mr. Pickett or Pickens, uh, pays close attention, man, because they've got a chance to make a lot of money in the NFL. And I'd hate to see them end up like AB, broke, destitute, trying to make it as a rap star. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it amazes me. And kind of build off what you're saying. You look at someone like Clinton Portis, who was in the league for years, who became broke and then had to turn to other means. Um, and I'm, I'm, I was thinking of someone else too, but it's very important. And I hope, and it's it's good to see the NFL to give these guys a full education on financial advice and everything like that. It's always interesting. And nothing, nothing beats the Chris Carter speech. Always have a guy with you to blame it on. Do you guys, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Always hey, have a fall guy. Carter. Always yeah. have a fall guy. With speaking you. of Chris Carter, I saw where he got hired by the Steelers. Uh, wrong Chris Carter. Yes. Different Chris Carter, but yes, different Chris, Chris Carter. Carter. Hey, Chris Carter, <laughs> congratulations on your employment with the Steelers. Yeah, you're talking about former Viking Chris Carter. Yes. Yeah. From the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> there you go, TA. He's throwing darts tonight, man. He's hitting bullseyes tonight. Awesome sauce. So uh, what's on the horizon, man? What's going on? Hey, don't forget about our new Facebook Steelers group right down below there. Facebook Steelers group. Steelers Nation. Steelers Nation. Local number 724, which represents the 724 area code. The Steeler fans. Of course, Steeler Nation everywhere. You're welcome to. But, um, yeah, anything else? Nope. Spring meetings start next week, so it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that, JT. Okay. Any th anything on the horizon? Anything on the ballot? Well, we're I'm I'm sure come Friday we'll start to start see what's uh, filtering through at this point right. in time. Sounds good, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure, as always. Absolutely. Careful in the hot tub, man. Steeler Nation. Hey, don't forget to throw a spoon there if you get a chance to buy some coffee, and uh, don't forget about Manscaped. Uh, manscaped.com 20% off use realm 20 and then uh, speaking of coffee um, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com Steelers realm and let's face it I'm not always in the mood for a coffee but anything uh, you can do to throw us a bone we appreciate it pay those uh, people with all that high tech gear that we have to use careful in the hot tub guys I'll see you. Steelers Nation, enjoy this springtime weather. 
you got nothing else to do now for a while because you're damn sure not going to PNC Park. I will be at PNC Park, and we got six weeks Pirates, Pirates baseball. Then training camp starts, baby. <laughs> then Steelers Nation, if you're out there, look for CJ. He's going to be the only one way up there in the nosebleed cheap seats, man, waving his banner. So hey, say nothing, hi to him. <laughs> nothing tastes better than a $14 beer at PNC Park. Yeah, with a $10 $7 hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you, boys. <laughs>